Hi, people of the interwebs. It's your favorite Abana Warehouse, Sarah here, with another car view. And today I have this 2020 Mustang Fastback in the color Twister Orange, which has to be one of my favorite colors on the Mustang. I love the just out there in your face colors like this one. Kind of reminds me of when you're making macaroni and cheese, you get that clump of powder that you just can't mix in with the milk and the noodles. That clump of powder is this color. That's where Ford got the idea from. You're welcome for that bit of information. I'm a huge fan of the styling of this S550 generation of Mustang, especially in the front end. And something that I notice on these cars, it's gonna irritate some people to say, but the front bumper lights remind me of the bumper lights on an S14 Silvia. A little bit, can you see it? Because now you can't unsee it. Because this does have the $4,995 high performance package, you get this front lip spoiler. And this also has an optional metallic gray stripe package, which is barely noticeable along the body line of the hood because it looks like a shadow. And the mirror caps and the rear wing are also finished in that metallic gray, which complements the orange nicely. With that high performance package, you get 19 by nine black machined face wheels with a semi-concave to them, square stance wrapped in 255-40 Pirelli P0s. And up front, you get these big four pot brake calipers, which don't have any powder coating or painting on them whatsoever. They're just left raw. Out back, you'll notice this does have four exhaust tips, and that's because it has an active exhaust system like you'll see on the GT with four different modes, which I always keep it in track, which says for off-road use only. Ha. I totally get the tradition of the Fastback with the Mustang. And don't get me wrong, I love the styling of it. It's a good looking car, but I feel there's a bit of a miss opportunity with the way the trunk opens. If they would have made this thing a lift back instead of just a Fastback and had the entire glass come up with the trunk lid, when you open it, there'd be even more storage space back here. I mean, it's a big trunk as it is, but missed opportunity. Let me know in the comment section below, what do you think? As far as the interior goes, you know I roll. I'm gonna keep it short, sweet, and to the simple and point out my physical observations from sitting inside this Mustang right now. I'm not gonna read off a brochure to you because it's 2020 and you can all Google the interwebs on your own. It is a car view though. So sitting right here, the first thing you notice when you hop in the car is it's $32,000 and the infotainment system looks like a calculator from when I was in middle school. I'm not gonna say when that was, but it's got a number pad and a little tiny screen, which is hilarious when you put it in reverse, that's actually your backup cam. But performance car, who cares? You don't even need a radio in here. Just delete the damn thing. The performance pack does give you some gauges between the two HVAC vents. And speaking of HVAC, there is no automatic climate control. You just got a dial for heat and a dial for the mount it blows. No heated seats either. But the seats in here, bolstering's not bad. It's actually pretty good bolstering. And I love these cheap seats. They're just cloth, but they're comfy and they look good. And that's all that matters. I'm actually a fan of these seats. Win for going cheap on the seats. How many times can I say seats? Seats. That sound right there is my head smacking the rear glass. Uh, back seat on here is pointless. It's for backpacks only. There's no features of any sort of comfort back here. There's a hook that you can stick your finger in. And that's about it. It does have a rip it style e-brake. Thank you for not using an electronic one. That's what's up. There's also a little plaque on the dash that lets you know that this is chassis number L0009. This is the ninth one built. And it went to press reviews. What happens if you like the number nine and now this car is a press car and then you'll be like, I can never have number nine because journalists had it and they beat the shit out of it. Sex be you. While there's not much tech or safety features in here, I'll give them some credit. The track apps that are in the center of the gauge cluster, there's actually a lot in there. It has all the important bits in here, acceleration timers so you can see how fast it is, braking performance so you can see how well it rips your face off. And then if you go down here, yeah, there's launch control. That's fun. As well as a line lock. Down by the push button start, there is a button for your traction control, as well as you can adjust the steering feel in the car. So it does have adjustable steering. However, it does not have adaptive suspension. And that's the one thing I wish that the performance pack would have came with. Magna Ride would have been nice, but just some form of adaptive suspension would have been nice to see, considering the Civic Si and the Hyundai Veloster both come with that for less money. Oof, let me out of here. This is ridiculous. Time to start this thing up. It 
It sounds good. It doesn't exactly sound like the Focus RS. It's just slightly different. I think it's the length of the exhaust pipe. Reaching the seat belt in here is really awkward. It's just weird the way the angle you have to reach for it. I wish it was like the BMW M3, the E92 generation, where it had the little hand that gave you your seat belt. Like I need to perform a new turn here real quick. science, I am now going to give it the beans. I'm going to put traction control into advanced mode. Pull it down, all right, and then this does have launch control. It may or may not be used. I cannot say. Ready? Welcome to Garage Science with Sarah. Powering this Mustang is not a Coyote V8, apparently because you read the title of this video and I've already watched the first half of it. This is Ford's EcoBoost 2.3 liter turbocharged four cylinder in the high performance trim package, which is a $4,995 add-on that produces 330 horsepower and 350 pound-feet of torque at 3000 RPM. FOMOCO. FOMOCO. That is all thanks to a larger compressor housing on the twin scroll turbo, as well as because of performance pack, it comes with the active exhaust and a beefed up radiator to handle the extra heat that the tune in the beefed up turbo are going to produce. If you remove this intake pipe right here and this coolant overflow, there's a good foot between the radiator and the front of the engine. And if you go back even further and you look from the front of the car and take into consideration where the radiators are and the top of the front bumper, there's like three feet from the front of the car to where the engine actually is. The engine sits about roughly halfway in relation to the strut tower bar. The plastic actually sticks out quite a bit further than the block and cylinder head. All right. The braking test. No one behind me. Oh wow. Oh wow. These are good. Hell yeah dude, these are awesome. Hi, I'm back. The drivetrain found on this Mustang is a six-speed manual transmission the way it should be. However, I have driven a Coyote 5.0 powered Mustang with a 10-speed auto, which you can also get with this 2.3 EcoBoost and it's pretty decent, I have to admit. But this Getrag MT82 paired with this 2.3 EcoBoost is perfect. I love it. This is such a good drivetrain and that's the problem with it. It's in a Mustang and to everyone else that sees this car, they'll go, oh, why didn't you get the V8? This drivetrain is so good, it deserves to be the highlight of a different rear drive performance car. Ford needs two rear drive performance cars because this should be the premium option engine for another car because it's that good. It doesn't deserve to just be the, oh, you couldn't afford a V8 option.
understeer whatsoever in there, just a hair of oversteer, but it was like manageable. Dude, this thing rips. I don't know what's more fun, this with a V8 or this with this EcoBoost. It just makes it a whole different car. I just wish it looked different though, to really distinguish itself from a, the GT. I definitely have to say this suspension's not the softest over a harsh asphalt and even daily driving this thing too, it's a little more on the harsh side. It's not really that comfortable, but it's a Mustang. As far as real world driving goes, fuel economy wise, it's not that much better than the V8. I mean, over the past five days I've been driving this, keep in mind it's a car view, so I'm driving it in a spirited manner. I've been averaging 21 miles per gallon. A similar equipped GT is 10 grand more. And this thing I don't think is 10 grand less fun than the V8. However, for $32,000, you could get an 86 or a BRZ or a Miata for similar money. They won't be as fast, but the interior and overall car, I feel you'll get more. Last year, I reviewed the Focus RS with the same 2.3 liter EcoBoost in it that was actually tuned, so it was around 400 horsepower. And it's crazy how different this engine is when it's paired with rear wheel drive. I hate to say it, as much as I like all wheel drive cars, I think I like it better in the Mustang. So if you guys have never seen one of my car reviews before, I have multiple categories that barely make any sense to the average person, but they are based somewhat on fact. And the first category is the bean score. It is a rating of one to five beans based on the feeling you get in your gut when you give it the beans. And this 2020 Fastback Mustang with a 2.3 liter EcoBoost high performance package is going to go rating of two beans and one kumquat. It is just a kumquat more than two beans. And don't let to fool you. That's a good healthy rating because there's never been a five bean rating on any vehicle. That would be well over a thousand wheel horsepower in this Mustang. Next up is the cookie category it is a rating of one to five cookies based on what you get for what you pay. It's a rating of value. And this car is going to get a rating of three cookies. This was actually a tough one for me to rate because I know it's void of safety features and it looks like a Tupperware on the interior and it doesn't have like a big bang in stereo system. But for $32,000, you get a ton in the performance department. And that's what matters because it's a pony car. And last up is the penguin category. It is a rating of one to five penguins based on how much I personally like this car and is going to get a rating of three penguins. I do like this a lot. I don't like the fact that it's in a Mustang because everyone's gonna be like, ooh, why didn't you get a V8? You'll never hear the end of that. I think Ford should bring back the Sierra or the Maverick or just call it the Ford XR4 Ti or something, I don't know, but have a smaller BRZ Toyota 86 MX-5 sized sports car with this powertrain in it and have two performance vehicles that are rear drive in their lineup. They could just modify this platform. I think that'd be awesome. And then no one would complain about it having this drivetrain because it's that good. Anyway, I'll see you guys soon with another video. Bye.